Daniel Wildlife Service pilot George Mwangi is used to flying dangerous missions on his own. I mean, I have the full view of what is happening on the ground, and I can see our men in their positions. I can actually see the other, you know, the, maybe the way, they, the way they are surrounded. He patrols an area the size of Maryland in a Super Cub for a Husky. In order to do this job, you have to be a good stick and rider pilot, and that's what we teach them, because they're patrolling at 200 feet all day long. And, you know, if they have the power back for too long, they're not using carb heat, they're not keeping the ball in the middle, they're not keeping the airplane coordinated, and you just don't have any room for error. One of the most common ways of finding uh, poachers in Kenya is, is just to get down on the deck, fly low, two, three hundred feet, and scan the horizon for vultures, uh, because vultures have better eyes than pilots do, and they find the carcasses first. You find carcasses of very huge um, elephants, mammals, animals, taskless, and maybe if you look at the tasks that were removed, you know, it was just like wasted. I mean, it's very painful. It's very painful, and especially for me who has to experience some of these things. I'm always the first person to see, and, 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 and anywhere there is an incident, then I'll have to be there. If there is, if there is even the slightest sound or sli a slightest indication that something is wrong, I'm always the first person to. And I think this has to stop. It has to stop. This destruction, this killing, because I don't know, it's not, it's not even inhuman. I don't even know what to call it. Visitors are rarely allowed inside this particular sanctuary where the Kenya Wildlife Service cares for young elephants orphaned by poaching long before they were old enough to survive on their own. With the youngest now around two years old, the hope is they will be released one day into the protected land and parks scattered around a country nearly the size of Texas. These elephants will need many lessons before they are ready. In a nation with very few tailwheel instructors, there are important lessons for the pilots to learn as well. Dr. Richard Sugden is making his third visit. Uh, those of you that flew with me when I was here a few years ago uh, called me two notch because I don't use three notches on takeoff. I want to get the tail up so I don't run into it. Yesterday we were demonstrating short field takeoff with Richard. We got the tail up and here come the elephants right across the runway. <laughs> if we hadn't had the tail up, we wouldn't have seen them. We would go up and I would say, okay, find me a herd of giraffes and tell me how many male giraffes are in the herd. And we would fly off, and it's amazing how fast they can find these animals. And they would find a herd of giraffes, and they go screaming around the herd at 110 knots in a 60-degree bank, pulling two Gs, and trying to count the number of male giraffes. And I would say, well, yeah, that's one way to do it, but why don't we put down two notches of flaps and slow down to 55 or 60 miles an hour and see how much easier it is to count the giraffes. So that's the sort of thing we've been teaching them. It hasn't been how to fly an airplane. It's why an airplane does the things that it does and some tips and techniques that they can use to try and catch poachers and stop the killing of these elephants and rhinoceroses. For a week, the airstrip in the Savo bush buzzed with activity as the pilots took turns flying with a trio of Americans. Three-time U.S. National Aerobatic Champion Patty Wagstaff has participated in eight such clinics since 1999. Joined on this visit by first-timer Richard Spencer, a retired Marine Corps pilot who was recruited by Sugden. They flew as much as possible, training for a mission that has grown more dangerous than ever by changing circumstances in faraway lands. Five or six years ago, the price of ivory in Asia might have been two or three hundred dollars a kilo, and now it's two thousand dollars. The financial incentive for poaching has escalated uh, dramatically. A kilogram of rhino on is going for about 65,000 US dollars. So this is a huge price. It is surpasses the, the price of gold. Kenya's wildlife draws tourists and their dollars critical to the nation's economy. For poachers, a single elephant can yield tens of thousands of dollars. So it's a, a lot of money. What does this mean? It means the people behind the poaching can afford to give poaching gangs satellite telephones, uh, rocket propelled grenades, automatic weapons. Kenneth Ho-Chang is among the pilots who have come under fire. As I was coming closer to where the bridge was, the guy started shooting at the aircraft. So I made some kind of turns, avoided the shots, but they were able to flip across one of the wings. 
but it didn't get where the tanks are. So out of my presence and my backup, they were able to gun him down. Something I was very much proud of because if I was not there to reinforce them, it could have been more disastrous. KWS Rangers are much like our own National Park Service Rangers, although armed with automatic weapons. They depend on the pilots for supplies, reconnaissance, and medevac. So I'm able to direct my men, okay, fine. Now you point your, point your maybe point your, 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 your fire, fire to, to a certain direction, maybe fire at this point. Maybe what else do you have, what are the supplies that you have, what is going to assist you to... So basically just to coordinate the, to be able to repel, to repel some of these, uh, <laughs> these bad guys, as we call them. What you just saw wasn't actual combat, it was an exercise, but it gives you an idea of the kind of mission these pilots fly every day. And the fatigue factor, you know, they're out there for hours at a time sometimes, so the stick and rudder skills have to be a natural and they have to react accordingly. It can't be something that you have to think about. And that's, that's what I work with them on really hard. And I'm, I'm tough on them. I'm like, I'm, every time I land, I'm sorry I talk so much and kept picking on you. And they go, no, 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 that's what we need. It's okay. So hopefully it's, uh, it's working. But. I mean, I have about 5,000 hours and incident free. So I think, and this is actually my second time. So just like we having this, this is like a refresher. It acts as a refresher, you know, they teach you how to get out of some of the habits that probably you've, maybe over time, come into them. So I think we are highly privileged and uh, actually this needs to continue. Maybe we even need to make this more frequent. At the Kiliguni Airstrip in Savo West National Park in Kenya, I'm Jim Moore, AOPA Live.